Awesome Gamers, Crabby King here today, and today, as you can see on the beautiful big screen, a slideshow that I made with my friend, and this slide is going to be about an Aatrox in-depth guide. So, this is a really, really deep guide about Aatrox, and I will be teaching you guys about his abilities, his ruins, masteries that you guys should use, and builds that you can actually go, and those sort of stuff, and what you guys should be doing for team fire and laning. So let's just get this going. I'm very, very sorry for not having webcam up because if I have that webcam, we'll just screw this up. So I will have it in the highlight. So I hope you guys won't really mind not having my face there. So let's just go to the next one. So Rose, a trash can be played in both top and jungle. He is a fighter slash a tank. So his ability are Blood Well, which is his passive, Dark Flight, his Q ability, Blood First when his W is toggled off, Blood Price when his W is toggled on, so Bleach of Torment, which is his E ability, and Massacre, which is his ultimate ability. So Blood Well is Aatrox passive, this passive helps Aatrox revive from the dead, this also gives him bonus attack speed, the cooldown of this passive are level 1 to to, I was gonna say 2000, 225, level 6, 200, level 11, 175, level 16, 150. This passive is actually a really, really strong passive. It helps Aatrox to do more damage, and it also helps Aatrox revive from the dead, which helps him win team fight. I'm like, it can actually help him and then lead his team to victory if he can actually pull it off correctly and know how to play. This can actually help you get away from sticky situation as well. Sticky situation, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just twisting my tongue or something. So, in those situations, when you, your alt, I mean your passive pop, you could just, um, you will revive and then you can have another chance to escape from the enemy. So, let's go to Dark Flight. Dark Flight is his Q ability. The ability makes him dash towards a target or jump towards a target. And then it does physical damage to all nearby enemy upon landing. And he would knock up the surrounding enemies as well. So the cost of this is 10% off his current health. Physical damage is 70 at level 1. Level 2 it will be 115. Level 3 it will be 160. At level 4 it will be 205. Level 5 would be 250 plus 68% um, percent of his 80. So the cooldowns are 16, 15, 14, 13, and 12 as the, um, as the level goes on. Um, the cooldown um, reduces. So the range would be um, 650 for the casting range, 225 for the um, effective ra um, radius, which is the part where um, he does damage to all nearby physical, nearby enemies, but then 75 is his knockup radius, so they have to be in that range to be knocked up. So, Blood First is the ability when W is toggled off, as I said before. This ability helps Aatrox heal himself back up to probably even full. Like, I did it once, I had myself up to full from like free autos, which was because of the triple of this um, amount of healing. So, he is when, whenever he's below 50% HP. Maximum HP. He his healing would be tripled, and the healing would normally be 20, 25, 30, 35, 45 plus the 20 percent bonus AD that he has. And the healing is tripled, so it would be 60, um, and so on. 75, 120, and then that, so on. But with but uh, with with life steal, that makes it insane. So blood price is his ability when he's toggled on. This helps him do more damage every third attack, but it trades because he will lose health during the process. This costs 15 at level 1, 23.75 at level 2, 32.5 at level 3, 41.25 at level 4, at level 5 is 50, plus 25 bonus AD, and then um, convert to health. So physical damage Done will be 60 at level 1 plus 180. So your your basic AD plus 60 would be the damage you will be dealing. And then level 1 will be 60, level 2, 95, level 3, 130, level 4, 165, and level 5, 200. So Blade of Torment is E ability, which you just unleash two waves and then it will combine and then it will be a, like a cone. 
Just because 5% of his current health, magic damage would be 75, 110, 100, um, 145, 180, 215, plus 60% of his AP, which he probably won't have, plus 60% AD, which he will have. So this will deal mixed damage. So the slow duration would be 1.75, 2, 2.5, 2.25, 2 2.5, 2.75, the cooldowns are 12, 11, 10, 9, and 8, the range is 1,000, so this is actually his longest range. So Massacre is his ultimate and R ability, which helps him deal magic damage to nearby enemy when this is pressed, and he also gains bonus attack speed and attack range for 12 seconds, so he does 200 damage at at level 1, 300 damage at level 2, 400 damage at level 3, he gains 40 attack, 40% 40 attack speed at level 1, 50% attack speed at level 2, 60% attack speed at level 3. Cooldowns are as following, 185, 70, so his cast range is um, 550, which is the part where he gets, um, which is the part where he deals a magic damage to the nearby enemies. 325, the bonus attack range, um, yeah, so his bonus um, attack speed would be um, 40, 50, 60, which helps him a lot. Plus his passive, which can also give him attack speed. That is just insane. So his pros, I just, I kind of skip um, pros. So his pros are Hussein, really, really super Hussein, especially with Life Steel and his W ability. Get mixed damage early game. Why I say early game is because he won't have that much mixed damage in the late game because he will probably be building either AP or AD. But you probably would want to build him AD. Strong duelist. As I said, his high sustain gives him more health to duel with the enemy. Uh, with the enemy, and he will probably be the winner. And you also have your double W um, but press ability, which is the toggle to on which deals tons of damage as well. He has great harassment early game and even late game with his E ability because it has a thousand range and great passive which can change fights and combined with GA you won't pretty much you won't die late game. Very vulnerable to gank without his passive is his cons and Q is very easily interrupted Health cost can be steep early because it will be 10% of his current health and he won't really have that much health in the early game. Lower starting health, that's why he's not a good pick in the early game. Um, low cooldown early game, like not low cooldown, long cooldown early game as well. Um, late game, he, his cooldown will be okay, but then your most important ability will be W, which has no cooldown, like 0.5, so there's actually no point in mentioning that. So top lane, the spells I would go for would be TP and Flash. What I would max would be W, Q, R, and E. Items I would go for um, either full damage or bruiser, which I probably would go for bruiser though. So the full damage um, build has um, boots with the speed, speed, and then blades, blade of the Rune king, hydra, blood thirster. Suffer and then also a GA. Bruiser would be um, boots, same boots, Hydra, Sunfire Cape, Omen, Spear Fissage, and also a GA. Mastery, I would I would go for 21 and 9, which is um, attack speed and then just the whole row of the attack speed. And then the last row of them until the um, second last one. Um, for defense, I would go for 9, so it would be 2. 3, 1, and then 2, 1. So it would be the middle row, 2 of them, and then 3, and then 1. You will be in the middle of that. And then, yeah, you will also be in the middle for the last one. The ruins, I would go for 15, 12, and 9. 15, physical damage, 12, magic resist, and 9 armor. You can also switch it up and give him a bit more attack speed, which makes it destroy. You, what you will be destroyed. So in lane A, you, you have super high sustain, so you should actually abuse your sustain that you have and just um, auto creep from your low and just keep trading with your enemy. Due to this high sustain, farming with Atrox is pretty easy. So when trading with your opponent, use blood price to deal a heavy burst of damage, then use blood first to top yourself back up. So remember, you can actually just stack your, um, your 
W ability on Chris, and then when you want to trade, walk straight up to him and use the blood price, which will deal a lot of damage. So you want to keep trading during your laning phase because you probably win all of them. When the opponent is low, just go in with your Q ability, Dark Flight, then Pop Massacre, which will give you a potent burst combo. So jungling. So for the jungle, I would go for Smite and Flash, which is pretty much usual. So for our max W, Q, R, E, and the items, Mastery, Ruins are the same. Pretty much everything is just the same, but for some response, so. Aatrox jungle is actually really, really strong. So the route I would go with be Krugs, Red, Raptors, Crab, either ganking mid or bot, or on top or mid on the other side of the map. Base, and then Wolf. Blue, drum, and then ganking top or mid or bot, depending on where you are on the bay on the side. Sometimes I won't even back; I'll just keep farming. So always use blood price when you clear in the jungle, because because it would deal more damage. Unless you're below fifty percent or preparing for a gank, you want to top your health by using blood first. When ganking a lane, use dark fight to engage on your enemy. And follow it up with Blade of Torment to slow your enemy down. So remember to use Blood Price when you are ganking, as it will give you a more burst combo to finish off the enemy. So if you're jungling, you might want to try something risky, which would be going for um, a dragon really, really early. Like what I would do is just Krugs, Red Raptors, Crabs, and then I would go for either get, getting the dragon. Or I would just like base or just gank the lane. Sometimes I just switch ganking the lane to a dragon because it will be more effective for the team. That is just my um, my style of playing of Aatrox. So if you guys don't want to do that, you guys can do it. It's kind of a risk. You have to be a really, really good Aatrox player. And actually, you don't have to be really good. You just need to know when to use a W or when, like, when to toggle on and off. Blood first or blood first. You can also solo Baron at level at when it gets to 28 with the most important item which would be Devour, having Devour on, Hydra, um, Blade of the Room Clean, the speed buff of that, and then you want to have that boots because it would give you massive damage so you would be able to solo Baron at um, 28 men, about 28 men, even earlier sometimes if you have those items. I have clips of me and um, soloing Baron, and I was actually was well, pretty hyped because I was just trying to solo Baron. I never thought I actually could have done it with Aatrox. Um, so for team fighting, his mobility grants him the ability to dot the back line easily. When focusing the carry, use Blood Price, which deals way more damage, and then it would help you destroy the back line easily. When you're low, toggle Blood First to heal yourself back up, and then. He will live through the team fight probably if he just get low and if he just get below zero his passive will just heal on back up and then you could just keep sustaining until and then it'll give your team an opportunity and cut through the back line and the front line as well so if you're actually focused just try to use blood first and just keep sustaining yourself until until you can feel like you can actually go in and kill someone out so if you're knocked with, and uh, if you're knocked below zero and then your health will revive you, you can just come back up and just go straight for it. Or you can just keep sustaining. It doesn't really matter. So I hope you guys actually all enjoyed this. So I would show you guys the clips um, of my highlight and then I'll talk to you guys after you guys seen the clips.
Auto attacks only, guys. You don't do much. Even though you're stunned, you don't do much. You're just solo dra solo Baron. Look at this. Watch this. I'm still gonna put this in. I'm just soloing this. I'm not doing anything. Maybe I should start doing stuff. Hey, don't come in. 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 I got this, bro. I got this. I got this. I got this. I might have to pop my up now, though. I have to pop my up now. Just don't use any abilities, and you should be probably able to sort of be fine. Boop! So loud! I hope you guys all enjoyed this Atrox guide, and I hope you guys actually learned something from it. And um, I hope you guys also enjoyed the highlights. Also, remember to subscribe. Um, tomorrow there will be another episode, which would be another guide for you guys. I will be doing every guide for each champion, and I will probably make it as short as possible, 20 minutes long, the most, or e the max would be 22, because that will be already probably pushing my mark. So I hope you guys would actually all enjoy this and I hope you guys can learn from it and use it to get yourself some ego. I hope you guys remember to click the thumbs up button and remember to subscribe for more future content and the more guides. So I hope you guys would all enjoy this. Um, there's something I have to talk about. I'm very very sorry for the um, sound. When every time I was talking there was like um, some sound behind it, it was because I was I was trying, I was just like knocking on my table on, while I was talking because, yeah. So, I really hope you guys actually all enjoyed this. Remember to subscribe. Um, see you guys tomorrow. Um, I love you guys. Um, tomorrow's video would be um, a Ari or a Kali. I'm not very sure. I think that's Ari. Yeah, it should be Ari. So, I will have it out. Um, I hope you guys would actually enjoy this guide. Um, I would be doing a, um, a gameplay or something about this in the future or I might just tell you guys more about eight shots and stuff like that to help you guys improve. So um, remember to stay subscribed and I love you guys and peace out. Bye.